Thank you to all of you who brought such a rich uh, sense of what is within this community and how God has gifted you. Well, Monday, you had Justin McRoberts, a guitar-playing superstar singing representative from Compassion, a Scotch-Irish-Mexican. Today, you get an old Norwegian grandmother. It's your lucky week. I want to talk to you about trusting God in the dark. We sang, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. It does not always feel that way. For a number of years, my husband and I have hosted something in our home called Coffee with Carlbergs. The first, we, it's co-sponsored by GCSA, and the first 30 to sign up online come to our house for dessert and coffee and an evening to just ask questions. It's been amazing over the years to see how often the questions center around how do you know God's will? One way of getting at that is, is, is how do you sense God in the dark, in the questions and the puzzles and the gray areas where you don't know which way to go? One of the other questions that kind of falls in there is, how did you ever come to Gordon? Because they've heard that we've been here since creation. That's a fun question to answer, and so I'm going to do that this morning and then tell another little story as well. It was a long time ago before you were born in 1976. We were living in Michigan. My husband was at Michigan State University and had just gotten tenure. Now, tenure is a good thing. It's a secure thing unless you do something really, really, really bad. The call came to him one day, I don't know exactly how, but he had been asked to come and to be considered for the job of a provost at a nearby Christian college. Well, I knew that since I had known him in college that eventually one day he wanted to work in Christian higher education. Well, here we'd been at Michigan State University. He'd been doing training. He'd gone to seminary in Denver. He'd done master's work, and now he had finished his doctorate and had been working, and now he was tenured. And this came. I thought to myself, I like our little house where we live. I like our church. I like my friends here. We're, you've got tenure. I mean, why now? But we knew eventually that was what my husband really longed to do. And I had signed one of those clauses, whither thou goest, I will go. And so what happened was he did get chosen, and we prayed before the decision that we would accept or not, prayed, looked in God's word. It didn't say thou shalt not be a provost at a Christian school. We talked to friends, we sought counsel, we did those kinds of things that you're told to do when you're seeking the will of God. Well, it finally came down to a leap of faith in the dark. Do we do it? And we did it. We sold our house, we moved to this little town, and, and the first weeks went by, they were great. Not long after that, our paycheck was delayed, his paycheck. It didn't seem till terribly long after that, paychecks weren't coming. And we realized we thought we'd made a terrible mistake because the school, things that hadn't shown up earlier, suddenly were showing up that the school was in great financial difficulty and had other kinds of problems. We felt, we felt, had we heard God? We sought God's will. How do we get up in such a mess? Our friends told us we were stupid to leave. We were stupid to leave. Why did we do this? What happened? Well, you're in the middle of it. What do you do? You live off your savings that you'd put aside from the sale of your house in the other place. 
And you keep putting one foot in front of the other, doing the duty that's nearest at hand. March of that year, there was an annual conference called uh, Conference on Higher Education in Chicago. And my husband went, I went along, I said, we can stay at my aunt and uncle's in Oak Park for free, then you can go on in and I'll pray back there and you can network and maybe something will open up. Well, sure enough, he came back that first night and said, you won't believe who I saw. Dick Gross. Well, Dick Gross was someone that we had known in college and loved and respected. And he had gone to Gordon College and was the academic dean there and then had just been selected as the president. So they'd had a search for a dean. We didn't know that. And so he said to my husband, he said, Oh, I saw an alumni news that you've gone to a Christian college. Great. My husband said, not so great. And he told the story, and he said, oh, man, I wish I'd known. We've just had a search. We've hired a dean to come here to the college. And uh, if I'd have known you were available, we could have put your hat in the ring. Oh, great. I'm thinking as he tells me the story, what lousy timing. Where is God? Why didn't this happen sooner? So we went on, week after week, doing what's expected of you in the middle of dark. One day in May, he was out mowing the lawn on a Saturday, and I just made some iced tea, and I said, come in, honey, and have a glass of iced tea. We sat at the kitchen table, and I said to him, if God showed up and sat right here beside you and said, where would you like to go, what would you say? He said, I would say New England and Gordon College. I didn't know much about Gordon College at all, but I'd heard about it when he told about Dick Gross being there and so on. And, and we just kind of left it there, and he went back out to mowing the lawn. A few hours later, the phone rang. It was Dr. Gross. He said, we've just had the strangest thing happen. I got a call last night. The person that was coming from Cal Berkeley to be our dean has decided he cannot do this. He can't leave. He's tenured. He believes God wants him to stay there at Cal Berkeley. And so the search is wide open again. Will you be willing to be one of the people that we look at? He didn't say, oh, I'll pray about it. He said, yes. <laughs> and he was considered among others and was eventually chosen. 33 years ago. Now, I can tell you right now, we've had many dark times. We have never had such a dramatic turnaround as happened with that. But I can tell you, after many years of walking with Jesus, that it doesn't always feel sweet to trust him, but it's wise to trust him, and it's good to trust him. He is worthy of your trust and of mine. Many years before that, in a place called Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, lived my grandmother. My mother would have told it this way. Oh, I loved Canada. What a wonderful place. We had everything we could imagine except money, but we weren't so good at imagining that, so. And every night we prayed for the poor people, so it wasn't us. <laughs> well, it was good there, but nobody loved it more than Mama, I think. There were seven children, not at that one time. There were only five of us then, plus Mama and Papa. And we... Um, well, what, what Mama loved so much was this was the first time she had her very own house. Just four rooms, but oh, it was a mansion to us. Well, in those four rooms, we learned much about life's valuable lessons. But a strange one was taught to us one day by Mama when Papa came into the kitchen and he was waving a letter. And he said, oh, Mama, God is so good. Guess what has happened? 
I have been asked to come to be the pastor of the Logan Square Baptist Church in Chicago. We're going to leave these prairies of Canada and move to Chicago. Isn't that wonderful? No. No. Mama said no to Papa? We were shocked. That was not something that usually happened. So I wondered what fireworks was going to come about in the kitchen. So I stayed in the corner and I kind of listened. And Papa said, Mama, that's not usual for you to you say no like that. But why do you say that? Well, I'll tell you why I say that. I say that because this is our first house that we ever had. And I planted all these flowers, and I made pretty curtains that I hung in the windows. And you know the outhouse that we have at the end of the path? Well, I put curtains in there, even though there's no windows, just to make it kind of cozy-like in there. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then I saved up the money, and I, I bought a red lamb for one dollar that I put in the kitchen on the floor. And, 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 and God would not expect me to give up that red linoleum. I know that, so I, I'm not going to Chicago. Well, Mama, they have a problem. Well, they did have a problem, to be sure. But Mama, I know you a long time, and I will ask this. I, I trust God in you. And I trust God to talk to you if this is right. And I will listen in case I was too hasty. And, and you, you, um, will you do that? Will you talk to Jesus about this? Yeah, I will do that. I will talk to Jesus about it. And I will, I will do this. I will put out two fleeces. One fleece is this. If somebody comes by and they want to buy this house with no sign in the yard, that's one fleece. Second, if somebody comes and they want to pay me back my dollar for the red linoleum, okay. Then I say we go to Chicago. Even though it's nothing but gangsters there and I got all these children. <laughs> well, Mama, I think that is a good idea. We will just do that. We will pray and... You put out those fleeces to Jesus. Well, I thought that was a pretty good thing they'd come up with. I thought for sure we were just going to be staying in Canada for the rest of my life, which was fine with me. One day, a few weeks later, Mama was out working in the garden outside of the house. And a woman come by and she said, Oh, what beautiful flowers. You know, I walk by here a lot. I just love this house. If you ever wanted to sell it, I would love to buy it. It wouldn't be for sale by any chance, would it? No. <laughs> well, um, you know, I always say, first we have coffee. You know, you like the house so much, you might as well come on in, have a cup of coffee, and I'll show you the house. Oh, I would love that. So I watched them come into the house, and Mama poured the coffee. The coffee pot was always on. And she served the woman as they sat at the table, and suddenly the woman said, Ah, oh, what a beautiful red linoleum. Yeah, well, that was something. I got a deal on it. It was torn in the corner. I put a plant over there, but I got it for $1. I saved up a long time to get that red linoleum. Oh, well, if you ever wanted to sell the house, I for sure would want to have the red linoleum. You would. <laughs> and so it come to pass. The mama and papa moved in all of us from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, to Chicago. You know, it was mama that first taught me, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." But I tell you this, it didn't look that way. You know, for mama, 
when you scrub floors, wooden floors on your hands and your knees, and you get splinters, a red linoleum is a wonderful treasure. And she didn't take lightly giving that up. She didn't know somewhere years later she would have wall-to-wall carpeting. She just knew Jesus. And she had learned to trust him. You know, it says in the Psalms, Psalm 119, 11 and 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. No, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And thy word, in 105, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It was my grandpa that taught me, thy word, a good provision, have I hid in my heart a good place that I might not sin against thee, a good purpose. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When it's dark, you leap sometimes by faith. And God is there. Jesus is worthy of your trust. Don't be afraid to trust him in the dark. He leads. He guides. You know what was so interesting about the first story I told you? When it came time, there was not any great unanimous vote to bring my husband here as dean. He just kind of squeaked in the door. But you know what? The big deciding tipping point was he had already made a choice to be a part of Christian higher education. They didn't want to risk another person coming from a secular university who might do what the person had done from Cal Berkeley. And so those nine hard months were absolutely what we needed to do to be where God led us this day. Isaiah, the ninth chapter says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. That great light is Jesus. Trust him. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, not always, but it's wise. The last verse, I love. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. See, it doesn't come naturally. We have to learn. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, save your friend, and I know that you'll be with me, will be with me to the end. Trust him.